All right. Good evening. Buenas noches a todos, todas y todes. Bienvenido a Territorial en Cuarentena. Today, we are coming to you live as always, but we have a bit of a um, international feel as we have our guests uh, joining us uh, from from France. So heaps heap of thank yous for our guest and his late night session. I really appreciate that. Uh, so without any further ado, let's uh, bring our guest and let's start this uh, tertulia and we'll go from there. So our guest for tonight is uh, Olivier Gato de, de Francia. So let's bring on board. Olivier, bienvenu, yeah. bienvenido, yes, amigo. Good. How are you? <laughs> Good. Late night, but it's good. All is good. Yes. Actually, this, this at least I speak from experience, that there's something magical that happens in the evenings. For some, is sleeping. For me, is uh, having a restless amount of ideas <laughs> that see. come in this we'll night. See. <laughs> but thank you. I really do appreciate it. I have... Uh, I have um, I, I have a a sense of gratitude for this space and how this space has evolved. And and part of that gratitude is because of plurality of people, also people coming from different areas in the world. Now we have so many so many bizarre amount of things in common, but there's also the cultural aspects which I think make the conversation so much more rich. So um, something I like to start. Um, characteristically here is talking about the current context, you know, talking about where we are right now. Okay. Um, and it seems kind of odd when I say that and I, and I remind myself that we're already past the second, we're already past mid October, which is to me insane to think about. Um, but how has these, which is kind of like seven months ever since coming to seven months now, ever since March, how has this how has this been for you you know it's a let me let me lay it out in a three-layered question um you know 2020 comes you know we greet this new year as we symbolically do every year and then i'd like to know kind of what things were you doing you know what what things were what things were were you endeavoring in were you participating in in those first two months of the year and then second part of the question is covid comes and then it kind of dismantles that, you know, without our permission because it doesn't really need our permission. And how has that, how has that, how, how, how did that, you know, how did that impact you? And how has it been for these seven months, you know, the, the evolving process of that? And then the third part of the question is kind of like what observations you make. If you forget any, I'll remind you, what observations you make okay. in terms of society, what pandemia has brought out in terms of society and you can give me your you know in the scope of looking at it in terms of europe uh yeah. maybe also your observations as far as the u.s and also puerto rico mm -hmm. as your spouse is from puerto rico so yeah if you forget anything so basically before covid what were you doing covid comes seven months writing it how has it been and then your observations of in terms okay. of society and covid okay so usually Let's start January. So January, usually I'm very busy because I'm preparing a residency I have. The beginning of February. So at that time, I'm mostly writing music, organizing. And that's what I was doing January 2020. Writing music, getting organized so the musician, they can come. You know, like, because most of the musician, they come uh, to the residency and they are from abroad. And the residency is in the town where I'm living. The town is part of Bordeaux Metropole, but they have a small theater there, 400 seats. And then every year we do a residency. So with dancers and musicians. So I try to mix music that I like, jazz, you know, bomba, plena, and stuff like this. And uh, I have the dancer dance on my music. So I was really busy writing. And at the same time, I was involved in football. I was like a kind of club manager, something like this. Or amateur, but it's still um, so uh, my days plus the three kids, you know, the three yeah. issues. So, and my wife being very busy teaching and playing, so uh, it was like kind of full schedule. You know. And uh, but so, beginning of February, I'm doing the residency, everything is great. And uh, suddenly, I was like hearing that in Italy, 
the COVID was coming and it was super bad. It was slowly going to Spain. And this is when I say to Shekina, my wife, I say, listen, this doesn't smell good because in Italy, it's like uh, everybody in France is saying, no, we are above Italy. Our health system yeah. is better. It's better. It's way above Italy and Spain. So what's happening there is because Italy is uh, way down and b below us. And Spain is the same, you know, like the, the famous things. And then I say, uh, I remember saying like second week of February after the residency, like really shortly after that, I said to my wife, this doesn't smell good because even in Italy, they are starting to speak to stop the football and uh, there is a lot of players. So it's bigger than everybody is saying all over the place. And I say, probably it's going to be bad for us. Too. I did not expect to be that bad, but I say, OK. And, and then from then uh, and end of February, I say everything is going to stop. If they start to stop the f soccer pro leagues all over Europe, cham Champions League and everything, and uh, that's it's a lot of money involved. That means this is bigger than when we think and that one they want to tell us. So, so I was kind of prepared for, you know, for all my projects to go down for a couple of months or three months. And uh, I was kind of prepared, you know, kind of saying, okay, we'll see. And it's going to be a good family time and everything. So, and then when they say uh, lockdown and everything, I say, okay, I, this I expected already, you know? Yeah. So it was not a big surprise. What surprised me that is what is coming next. Like after two months, when we when start France start to reopen, suddenly we realize music, arts, and everything are like totally left over. Nobody cares about it. Yeah. We need to open the restaurant. We need to open bars. We need to open business. We need to open. But music, they say, okay, you're one year off. It's okay for you. Hmm. The theater are not going to open again. And you go off and you do something else. Some people, they even say, okay, do something else. And I realized, let me see, I'm like a professional musician for 35, 37 years. And then they tell me everything you did until now is like, uh, it's just for fun, you know, like, uh, it's like a hobby really a job. Yeah, it's a hobby, you know, it's not really a job. So, and then, then this really kicked me down, you know, it was like, because at the beginning of the lockdown, quarantine, I was really like, like Shekina, everybody, all the musicians, we were like, wow, we're going to practice, we're going to write music, and we did practice, and we did write music, and we take, took care of the family, you know, the boys, every, it was big time, everybody, we were playing together, and then we were practicing, and, everything. and then suddenly, when you realize that if finally you don't really matter that much to the French society, which is supposed to be a society with culture everywhere and we respect yeah. the art and everything. Then uh, I really like, uh, okay, I say, oops, oopsie doopsie. So I have to do something uh, different. I have to, to 35 years you spend in the music and you don't impact the society. It's not that I want to have a big impact, but I say at least, you know, around me and I see my mother say, okay, it's okay, you don't play, you know. And people that you know and oh okay you don't have job oh it's bad you know but nobody is really like willing to do anything to, to help and everything so i say okay so i'm going to start to get involved in something else and at the same time they proposed me to take care of the football school in the club i was managing so i say okay let me go because then i realized nothing is going to open at least until the end of 2020. Yes, and then it, it looks like it's not going to be maybe spring now, you know. And some places they say, okay, okay we start in uh, September 2021, you know. So in the meantime, what I'm supposed to do? You know, so um, I was living uh, all this time with uh, music and everything, and now it's finished. So I change, you know, I, I, I can adapt. But, you know, it's, it's, it's more the way they don't respect what we did or what the art workers are doing that that is more touching me than the fact that i have to, to do something else you know yeah yeah for that's living amazing. because everybody in uh, six months i don't know we we'll see it's, it's, it's going to be another story who's going to be it was already the question who can be in two, in 2020 beside covid who can be really a full-time musician because with internet and a lot of aspect of the new music scene new music business we were all having questions, you know, like how we can do now. Nobody's buying records anymore. You just buy one track or you stream. 
you know, so it's totally different business. The clubs are less and less on the planet and also less and less people going to the concert because, you know, they can have access to free music nonstop. And, and the taste of the uh, people also change, you know. It's more people, but the taste is still going for more popular music and more basic music. So. I grew up in the 80s in Bordeaux. It was like maybe, uh, I mean, I was 20 already, but it was when I started to play music, it was like 10 clubs playing music every night. Yeah. And now there is totally only different. one. Now yeah. it's only one. Yeah. And one, and, and, and before, you know, it was not, now it's like one club for 10,000 musicians. Do you think that, do you think that, um, and this is not to just focus on a silver lining, uh, disregarding the very real struggle that it is to, as an artist, as a musician specifically, to have to, this sort of, as you might have suggested, this slap in the face by, you know, by, by the government or by the, uh, yes. by the sector. But do you, do you think looking into that, that I mean that that, that is definitely a, a, a traumatic event. Like holy shit! I hear I thought I had your support, and now I see that I really don't. Um, putting that a little bit aside, without completely disregarding it. Um, again, this is not to decorate the event, but as you say, like how things have been going more towards the digital, people downloading, streaming. Um, even though there's, I think this year or last year have been uh, were vinyl record sales have boosted up because I, and I think exactly. people might reminisce the fee, the might miss that touching something that having something. And I think maybe COVID could do that or COVID could, could create such a nostalgia for the gathering experience that when this thing is quote unquote over, if it'll ever, if we can, I mean, I don't think it'll ever be like, Hey guys, it's all over now. But when it'll, you know, things start opening up in terms of club and stuff, um, of that nature that people will probably because of how much the lockdown has locked us down, it'll bring this new wave of, Man, like I, I, I really want to experience this to have an experience, or you know, at the very least, at the very least, in the beginning of of, have you have you contemplated that? Have you contemplated yeah, that, that aspect? I, I think more like it's going to be okay. When once we once we go out of COVID, I really believe it's going to be six months a big mess because it's yeah. going to be a lot a lot of musicians wants to play. Everybody wants to play. There is going to be ah. A lot of places are going to be full of music and everything, but then people they cannot go out. I mean, it's limited time, a limited amount of people, and it's going That's to be true. too much. It's going to be too much music everywhere to fill up, you know, all the places. I wish it would be like, uh, you know, like my mother. She's always telling me like, oh, when the Second World War finished, it was like it was party time every night for one year. You know, the French people they were every night they were dancing. It was music everywhere for one year in France. Even mm. they didn't have food, even they didn't have nothing, but they were like, oh, wow. After four years of uh, German occupation, they were like so relieved and the war is was, uh, finished. Bah, so they went, you know. But uh, still, in terms of music, okay, it's going to be music because I, uh, this is what I said. Okay, they say, everybody's saying, you didn't play in uh, June 2020, so you will play in June 2021. Or you don't play all the time, so we just postpone your concert. But postponing, 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 just piling up like concerts that are going to, you know, to arrive suddenly. And uh, who's going to go out? Which money? You know, people are going to go spend the money they cannot. They have to keep kids, so they, it will be like uh, it would be a lot of music and uh, and less. Not that many people going out. I yeah. I hope I'm wrong. Yeah? But no, I no, that, that's to, that's that's a reason. That's a very reasonable. Assessment. It, it, it's, it, this is what after is going to be. So, 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 then we will go balance, and it's going to be less music offered, but more yeah. people going out. And then we will go find the balance. Finally, you know, like after maybe one year. But this is we're speaking of people life. You know, like some people are losing two years. I mean, it's worse than that. People are losing their lives. You know, so it's not big. That that's that's true. That's true. That's and, big and, deal. And, and, but still, you know, and at the, on the other opposite. You have people, they stay home and they get paid uh, almost fully, uh, at least in France. You know, Okay, you stay home and you're like unemployed and we wait because you are yeah. very vital for the society. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have you have those different types of scenarios, and that's why it's very important to keep that in mind as as um, as soon as one opens one's mouth in terms of it's speaking of who who you know what circumstances might 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 one be inhabiting because there's some people that have not. Because maybe not because they asked for it, but have kind of j- hit the jackpot in the sense of maybe they were working for a job that they were doing the eight to five, for example, and then it's it's coming it's come to the conclusion that hey wow that job you could actually do for me home you know and yeah. which is this, this has been a, this has been a conversation that's been trying to be provoked for 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 some time, but <clears throat> the the old school mentality of maybe corporate corp- corporations and stuff like that I don't know yeah the employees got to be here. You know, that do the punch in, punch out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this has definitely brought attention to that, to the to to the to the to the mythological value of like, does this person really need to be physically there? So there are some of those things, but then there are those things that, you know, like the service business I've had here in this in the program. Some of my friends who work in the service business, you know, own own, own restaurants or own bars or manage them. And it's hit them really, really heavy. Yeah. It's hit them really hard. I mean, and they're from Puerto Rico. And Puerto Rico has been the whole, this whole like juggling, like we open, we close, <laughs> we open, we close. And then it's it's it it really messes it messes with your head psychologically, but also messes with your business because then you start spending time, money into opening, to then gotta close again. And and yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and that this obviously brings out a lot of the incompetence of different governments. Of course, of course, it's times of pandemia do that. Throughout, you know, throughout to, 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 to get to know a little bit more about you, a little bit about your history, your pilgrimages, you know, living and, and you know, raising, being, being, being born and raised in France, then uh, living in the U.S. for some time. You know, if you can share uh, through, through, through moments of what I like to call transformation, if you can share perhaps three moments or three uh processes in your life three seasons three instances just three things um whether instantaneous things or or process type things throughout your life that you can that you can acknowledge them as moments of of transformation of uh, uh, i i remember this i remember this here i remember this and i know this had a cath- cathartic effect in my life so if you can share um whatever you might deem shareable that you recognize as experiences of transformation in your life, at least three, all okay. throughout your life. Okay, at least three. Okay. Uh, ooh. Okay, at least three, so I can have four. <laughs> you you can you can put four. Okay, this is a very free Let's space. Say, okay, like for people to know, I was born in uh, Manos, which is Haute Provence, southeast of France. Okay. This is like the part that was really Roman long time ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was born there in Haute Provence, you know, in the Alps. And then I, I moved after I was one year old, I moved to Cannes. And this on the seaside, if still Provence, but on the seaside. So I stayed there. And this, you will understand after why I'm saying this, because I stayed there and my mother, we were living very close to the Mediterranean Sea. Mm-hmm. So every day, my mother, back then, they say, you have to put the kids on the sun every day so they get vitamin D. Yeah. So she was bringing me on the seaside every day, winter, spring, you know, fall and uh, what, uh, summer. Then I moved to, when I was three years old, I moved to northeast of France. Mm. In big Lorraine. Change. Yeah, big change. Uh, yeah, that's totally the opposite, you know, like going from Puerto Rico to I don't know, like uh, to Chicago, Canada. Let's say. <laughs> yeah. And, and then there is like, I remember I was five years old and I was like, my father used to be in the military. You know, he was an engineer, but he has a PhD. He was engineer, but at the same time, he did uh, war in Algeria. It's a long story, but let's say. So, and he was still involved as a reserve, like uh, in the French army, French mm-hmm. Air Force. So I was always like, oh, wow, army is cool and everything. And I was in the time where we had one channel in France on TV. Mm-hmm. And they were showing us this American movie, you know, where it's like, oh, yeah, we fought the Japanese and we fought the German. And uh, I died, but I died. Ah, it's super dramatic. And, uh, you yeah. know, when you're five years old, you do the same in your garden after with your friends. Yeah, 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 of course. It's impressive. So, okay. So I'm five years old and I say, oh, this is the 50th anniversary of the end of First World War. And I uh-huh. was like, I was 19, 1968. 
So I say, okay, I want, I want, I'm five men. I want to see it. I want to see it. And they say, okay. My mother say, no, I don't want him to see this because it's very. And my father say, let him see if he wants to see. And they say, I remember they were saying on the TV, okay, this is the first time we're going to show totally uh, unshown film footage. Form, footage and everything. I say, okay. And this, and uh, at the time there were no like uh, rated for the kids or whatever. You 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 were one channel. You look everything. You know? Yeah. <laughs> From John Wayne to yeah. you know like a cartoon to Bugs God, Bunny God and, help uh, us all. And like uh, American dropping bombs on Vietnam and the kids getting burned. You know like we we were seeing yeah. all of this. Uh, like wow. uh, okay, this is deep. heavy. Yeah. So I, I see, and then I remember, and I was like totally shocked because they were showing like the dead body. They were showing like the you know one uh, body in the tree, a horse in the tree. They were showing the rats eating the. Soldier dead body. They were showing, you know, like a and this is footage of the First World War. First World War, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was living in a part which very close to Verdun, and Ver Verdun was the big, one of the biggest battlefield of the First World War. Yeah, yeah. So I was Jesus. really like I was really there, you know, like uh, when in I was the a grounds. kid. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I remember when we, when I was living there, every week we were digging in the garden. Somebody was digging in the garden and was finding a bone, you know, a skull. A weapon, you know, uh, amulet or whatever, whatever grenade. We're digging. Shirt. We're digging up out yeah. of the of wow. the garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was there. It was down there. I remember once we were playing with like a shell, and it was like my father took it and said, "Okay, you can play with that." And we are throwing this because it was empty, you know. <sighs> but it was a lot of kids every year, or a lot of people working in the fields that were getting killed or injured by uh, like rocket and stuff like this uh, you know a bomb that did not explode back from uh, 50 years ago and wow. very very often we are like bones like if you find a bone in your garden you call the police as he was like okay we find a german bone so maybe a french bone you know whoever it is who died there it you was know. your normal yeah exactly and this i remember for years and years it took me like until the centenary like the anniversary of 100 years to, to close the chapter of the chapter of the First World War, because for 50 years, basically, I asked myself, why? Why people, they could do that for, you know, like, as a kid, and then growing up, I was always asking the question, why people are so crazy? Why you can be yeah. in a trench fighting and killing each other? Like, uh, French, there were 1,300,000 that died, and Germany, I think, is almost 2 million or something like this. In the First World War? Just First World War. Just shooting at each other. For at the end, France was this, just get back Alsace-Lorraine, you know, but just a small part of the country that we had like 40 years before. For, yeah. And German, they, they lost almost nothing. You know? So this was like really my first time like saying, are human beings really like this? You know, like you can do this to your people. And I came to the point like how the French people, they could let their kid die like this so easily. You know? Like the same with German people, British people, uh, you know, after later on, uh, US people. How you can sacrifice your youth in a war that doesn't make no sense at all? Sure, because, yeah. Because we didn't get nothing at the end of it. Just like the only stuff we get is like uh, Italian immigrants, they come and here I am. <laughs> because you have to, to put people in the countryside, because every village in France, you have people who died in the First World War and young men. Mm -hmm. So that means no more French, you know. So that's when the immigration really starts in France, because you have to fill up the countryside. Nobody yeah, is there. it's only women. Yeah, yeah, you have to reproduce. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So my great grandfather, he had six boys and two girls, and uh, out of eight kids, only my grandfather married a uh, Italian woman. Everybody mm. married French people. So that's that's the first one. That really changed my perspective on, uh, uh, like, going from uh, oh, we are all brothers and uh, life is beautiful as a kid, yeah. to really like taking the face like, okay, this is the reality of the world. Like, yeah. uh, we we can kill each other to, to, you know, like you can kill a country or whatever or the youth of a country, just for political reasons. Yeah. Then that's why i did later the second one is like is later i was already a musician i went to live in the states and then come back and this my first epiphany as a musician it's totally different that's very dark and this one is very light 
And then I was playing once with uh, some now they are famous musician, American musician, but back then they were not known really. And then uh, suddenly we were playing, and uh, first or second set I don't remember of the week, and uh, I felt like I didn't control myself anymore. Somebody else was playing. Wow. Yeah. And uh, and we I felt that uh, he was a huge brain above the bandstand, like controlling pian the piano player, me on bass, the drummer, and the sax player. And he was like, and after we finish the set and we look at each other and we say, did you feel the same thing? We I felt because like we an felt out that of everybody, body experience kind of thing. Kind of, yeah. I was kind of not anymore. You know, my finger they were moving, mm -hmm. uh, my body was moving, I mm -hmm. was playing, and he was sounding great. But uh, I was not uh, the one, you know, I was mm -hmm. like, somebody else was, I was, a, you know, a vessel, a, a pipe, or I don't know how you call it, like somebody else was controlling everything. Yeah, like we were yeah you were like a channel. Yeah, 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 channel, exactly. I was looking for the work. And we, like, uh, somebody is moving, and uh, us, from above, uh -huh. and the four of us, and uh, so well that everything is clicking like this, you know. Yeah. And this is like after I, I realized, like musician, just musician are calling, getting into the zone. You know, it's somewhere where you go, and then you have this uh, spiritual experience. So back then, I was kind of, kind of a complex relationship with uh, faith and religion. So yeah. I was like, okay, but this is the first time he, I, my, uh, he shake me in my, you know, atheist kind of period. I yeah. Was like, Okay, let me see. Because I was, I, I, okay, it's another story, but I, when I was reading the gospel when I was 17, 18, I was reading philosophy at the same time. I said, this is so, so trivial, trivial, so easy, so why nobody's doing it? So it's stupid, you know, I was yeah. like saying, okay. Then it's later I realized, okay, it's so tri trivial and it's so easy that uh, nobody can do it. Because the simple things are sometimes the most difficult things to do. But anyway, so this shake me a little bit. I, this is when I realized there is something when you play music, it can happen that if you play with the right person and with the right, you know, something is happening and this is totally above you. You, you, know, like you don't belong to that. You know? So, and I was not taking any drugs or anything. I was just drinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was drinking sodas and stuff like this and not even too much. You know? So you cannot uh, say, oh, okay, maybe this is a... Uh, you know, tie, it, tie it with yeah. sort of like an tie intoxication. Else, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that was the second one. The third one is like a couple, uh, couple of years later, that experience, I went to play in Greece. I didn't want to, I didn't want to play in Greece, but uh, because I said, oh, it's like Italy, it's like uh, Provence, it's like uh, I'm from Mediterranean, so I don't need to go to another country. And a friend told sure. me, no, you have to come, you have to come, you have to come, you have to come. I went there and I realized, wow, this looks like uh, my uh, my country when I was a kid. You know, like uh, you, they were like 20 years back. I went to 20 years back. Time traveled. Yeah, yeah time traveled. I said, wow, this is so great. People are going out, everybody's in the street. Nobody's blue on the TV, it's party time all the time. And you have yeah. the kids with the grandparents and everybody's saying hi to each other in the street and everything. And you go to the small shop, you still have a small shop, you don't have like mega yeah, supermarkets or stuff, malls yeah. and stuff like this. Wow, this, and you eat food, you eat like tomatoes, you have fresh tomatoes, fresh fish from the sea. This is like, like, like when I grew up in, a, in Southeast and everything. And then I, I finally, I came back to France after my concert and then I say, okay, Next vacation, I will go there. And I find a very cheap ticket, like maybe $100 round trip to go to Greece. And I say, okay, from Bordeaux, I say, Ooh. and I went and I went on vacation and I stayed there like one and a half. And this is when I realized I was belonging to that culture, you know, to the Mediterranean culture, like Greek, Italian, Roman, Greek, uh, Provençal, you know, Southeast French. And that's because living in Bordeaux is totally different. It's oceanic, it's, you know, it's like, uh, it's totally, uh, totally different culture than uh, the one from Southwest one is totally different from Southeast one. So it was like, for me, I, I, this is when I realized, okay, I, I, I grew up in a totally different culture and some rules from the South, from the Bordeaux society or culture the, uh, that I never liked, but I thought that was the rule for everybody, you know? So now you realize, okay, there is people that are thinking the same way you are thinking. When you make a joke, they understand the joke you're making. 
they don't get offended, you know, and suddenly I realized, wow, this is home. And then suddenly I was close to the sea and I started to realize, wow, I miss so much to be close to the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, I was really like, you know, this for me was like totally, maybe you handled the one was wrong, maybe is the culture where you are in that doesn't fit to you and you don't yeah. fit to that culture. So that was like, a, also I was 28, I think when I was there, that was, and I stayed there for 18 months until, uh, you know, like, okay, party time was over and it was time to go back to, to business. But, but it was very, that's the three main that changed, you know, really my life. Perspectives in your life. Yeah, which is, I'm not speaking about, uh, you know, my family and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of like pre, pre, pre that. Yeah, pre yeah, that, it's pre, pre and it's, uh, family is different. Family is, you know, yeah. it's, like, uh, it's like a totally uh, different aspect. But yeah. this is what really affects me down deep, how I look at the so society. Kind of made your foundations. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. how I want to raise my kids and yeah. uh, now, you know, like, and uh, who I was looking for or who somebody put me on my way to make a family, you know, yeah. like, uh, that's, that's different, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, nevertheless, you know, every experience does affect us. Every experience, so wherever it might come from. But I, I read you in that, in that, I read you in that statement. Like, you know, this is those, those forming steps, those forming that you know you start. You, you're building your house, so you you you're making those foundations. Uh, you know, as you as you recall your childhood, and also as you mentioned, you know the why you were sharing the stories of your your childhood, um, because there is that sense of memory, and there is that that sense of belonging that you establish. You know, as you as you mentioned, as your mom would 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 take you to the to the seaside on a daily exactly. basis. Mm -hmm. That 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 definitely. You know, not only were you getting your vitamins uh, C there, but you're also getting this the the vitamin of the reference like this referential uh like the realm this realm is kind of like kind of like a little Heidi in the Alps you know like when you think of <laughs> you know like she she feels like she corresponds to that you know that to the exactly, Alps and like yeah, you know yeah, that yeah. she yeah. she she the Alps welcome her welcomes her and she welcomes the Alps exactly. um I don't know if that has anything to do with so, so you're so close there um but but there is there there's definitely shaping there's that there's definitely a shaping uh, a shaping consequence and and I mean that's that's why and that's that's part of the reason for which I value so much education I value education I value you know, not only because I'm a teacher but that was part of that what called me in the the pedagogical value of 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 planting memories of healthy nature to kids. Uh, because now you know, because now we can look at a world that has so many references of kids that are now in their teenage years or in their young adult years or in the late adult years, dealing with so much trauma because of how because of how broken those formative years were. And it and it is really mostly nothing other than a broken person who is sharing now their brokenness to their kids. And then it's just this end unending cycle. So when we so when we think and, re and think back onto, you know, times of old, and of course, there are different things that our parents or our grandparents didn't have a hold of. Um, but I think if there is, if there was love and if there was um, a, a genuine interest to, to see our kids or see their kids flourish and stuff like that, even with their maybe old school mindset, I think that love, I think will definitely, you know, like it will definitely shine through, uh, and you can see it and you can tell differences of a person who had a really great childhood and someone who didn't for whatever reasons. You know, this is not to this is not to condemn that, but it is to speak out into uh, how we respond to that, too. You know, you shared all these experiences, but I would like to know also. And you did share an experience that that was of musical nature. I mean, I think that's, I think that's such a fascinating thing you shared, kind of like having this transcendental experience even even as a as a person who didn't concern concern with religious matters perhaps in the sense of devoting yourself mm -hmm. in that and you know being into this dynamic of like a christian muslim whatever um and i and i think that probably speaks into the mystical nature that it really doesn't or 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 just the, the realm of the unknown the realm of the unknown and the mystery it doesn't need us 
to subscribe to anything. It doesn't need to say, well, you're a Christian. I can now come and visit your life or, uh, or you're an atheist, you know. And I, I think it, 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 if anything, um, our sense of humanity might, might connect us to, to that unknown and the mystery uh, sometimes maybe kind of ascribing to one sort of um, tendency, one sort of religion might even limit that because it already kind of comes with this sort of like pre all these predisposed conditions. And then sometimes though that's that realm of mystery comes and visit us. And then we have that pre realm of disposition. We're like, well, no, that's not very, that's not what, that's not what my narrative tells me. So kind of sometimes, and that the same thing could happen with with atheism or whatever. We can have the predisposed notions. And I think it, it's it's a matter of how open are we to the mystery, you know, to that mystery. Yeah, room. but I think like with the music, you you can break that. You know what I'm saying? Then you are playing the music. So even if you are atheist or believer or whatever, what kind of you know, you you suddenly the music puts you in a state of mind that hmm. then you forget about everything, and then uh, you for, if you can reach if for me if you can re start to play music, then you're going to forget all your culture, you forget everything, and you are like just okay, let it go, and uh, yeah. you're on stage, and you have to let it go, and suddenly if you're like this, then you're going to be somewhere else, and when this happens, you you just is experience is something that I can speak about. If you didn't feel it or live it then you cannot really understand it. But yeah. when I feel it, I say suddenly, this really like, okay, that's mean, why? that's why now I understand why all my American friends, they, they on their, you know, when they make a record, they say, thanks God for that, blah, blah, blah. Because before that, I was saying, we, with all the French guys, we were saying, look, again, this guy is like our age and he's still uh, saying, thanks to God or thanks to blah, 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 blah. Always religious purpose. And us, we were like, you see, this guy, this guy is still, uh, they are still uh, like back in the time and everything. And then suddenly you, you, when you experience it, also I could, I see, I, I, I went to the stage because I wanted to play a certain type of music that I couldn't find in France. And I was 100% sure I could not find it in France. Yeah. So that's why I went to the stage. And when I went to the stage, I experienced that. Mm. But I never went on the, then it, it was my studies. I stayed three years in Boston and it was uh, three years of studying. So, but then when the, uh, my epiphany uh, occur, uh, occurred, I was like, uh, I was this was, in the, this was in the U.S., this experience No, you this shared? was in France. It, okay. it was in France. So then I was a profi playing professionally. Mm -hmm. And it happened the same year, uh, yeah, with another musician, then older musicians. Like that experience, kind of, you kind of replicated it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then he, I, we finished to play, and at the end of the set, the, I have a friend who was not a believer also, and he comes to me and he say, a French friend, and he say, you know, what did you guys did? You were playing like a standouts, like, and, and, and suddenly I felt like the stage was lifting up. Yeah. I say, I yeah, say, wow. I, I, I say, I don't know. I didn't do nothing. I just like felt like you. I, I didn't. I don't know what I did, uh, different from usual or whatever. It was like, uh, because suddenly, and then you start to to realize by this experience, like, but the music is the catalyzer, you know, of, okay, you you do like, uh, you know, you can do ostinati, ostinati and stuff like this, and then suddenly you, you go in some kind of trance. I don't want to use trance because it's not exactly, but you can empty your brain yeah. because if you really want to play, you have to, especially in jazz, you have to empty your brain because otherwise you're going to be scholar. And then you empty your brain and suddenly this is, if you are, if you're open to something else, then it's going to happen to you. You know, If you're not open, you're going to, you know, this I think is kind of, this is my definition of grace. I know you don't have the, we don't have the same. <laughs> it's sometimes like, okay, I give it to you, you have it. And uh, you you will feel this experience, and uh, okay, now you do whatever with it, but you I give it to you, and you you felt it. So this is this is something that uh, for me was really changing because then he slowly and slowly he led me to uh, to my spiritual quest mm. through music. You know, mm -hmm. music is always the one who's like, oh okay, so because I start to notice like, oh this guy is not only playing notes. Because there's a lot of sax player can play like this, you know. Yeah. But this guy has something else, and that's the mystery. Yeah. And you, you cannot explain. 
and there is nothing to explain. And uh, and there is and this is very difficult for a European guy to give up on the rational thinking mm-hmm. and say, okay, give up. There is nothing to explain. Yeah. If you don't want to understand that maybe some uh, a bigger force upstairs or whatever, or if you want to understand that there is nothing, but still is a mystery. You cannot explain. You cannot take his brain and cut it in pieces. And, yeah, dissect it and kind of like it's kind of like if you if you attempt to explain it, then it just completely dissolves. It just completely this it stops. Yeah, it, it, it kind of like it neutralizes that. Not that we shouldn't try. I mean, I'm I'm all for trying to. But I, I get that. It's kind of like when you t- when you tell a good joke. And if you try, and if you have to explain it, then it just it's, <laughs> there, there's no chance of regaining that momentum again. Exactly, it's like okay, <laughs> on to something else. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I, 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 you, you, you made the reference, and I want to, I, I, and I want to, I want to follow your lead there, of that which, that which made you aware that. You know, in the U.S., you are to find something that you knew you were not going to be able to find in France. What was it that you were looking in to find in the U.S.? And tell us a little bit about maybe that experience of search or that experience of, of, of you know, exposing yourself to that. And, you know, it's, it's uh, opening yourself to whatever it was that you were trying to find and how kind of like got, walk us through that journey. Because... Uh... When I grew up, I think I started to listen to jazz music. I was five, five years old, and uh, I was hearing something that I couldn't. I never heard in France. You know, when musicians were playing or record from French musicians, I couldn't hear the same thing. And uh, so slowly, I say, okay, if the music is coming from there, so I have to go there to to find out why we cannot have it in France and everything. After I, I understand why, but you know I understand that you cannot take out the music out, because remember I was uh, I was born in the sixties and uh, back in the seventies you couldn't go and uh, okay download uh, yeah, three gigas yeah. of music and you have everything. No, we had yeah. like to go to a record store yeah, yeah. to buy the vinyl and. Uh, to bring it home, and after you call your friend, oh, I have this recording. Oh, you have this recording. Can you come please? over? No, I, yeah, come over, and then and then you bought this one. Oh, I want to listen to this one, and that's you know, it was like a, uh, like you start a collection with like, and when you have twenty records, you're like, wow, look, this guy has twenty records. Now you just like boom, download like a uh, twenty thousand recording at once. You know, it's insane. So that's why. So and I was, but I was still hearing on this recording that I had, and I start to to go. I remember every time I like a break in school when I was 14, 15, 16. I was very good at sports. I could run very long and very fast. So I was going from my high school to downtown Bordeaux. It was like maybe like two miles to run to the shop for one hour break. Go and ask him, can I listen to this recording to the guy? And he was putting the recording. I was oh, like, 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 yeah, like, like. And awesome. then I was running back to school oh. and uh, I was coming in school like sweaty. What you were doing? Uh, <laughs> I cannot, I cannot explain. I went to, uh, if I said back then, like, uh, you know, in the big time of rock and roll and uh, Super Trump, Genesis and all the rock groups like uh, hip hop and stuff like If I go back to school and say, I run to go to a record store to listen to a jazz recording, they will all look at me like, yeah, that's yeah, that's your that's kind finished. of school. Jazz is finished, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, and, but I was hearing, you know, I was hearing something that I I, I never found anywhere else. So I said, okay, and I went, and I then I went to the states, and I realized, even though we were reading, even the li- literature on jazz music or Afro American culture was like three books, and two written by French people. Which doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I say, okay, I had to go to to learn more about, you know, and I met some friends, American musicians from France. They say, yeah, I go to the States to study. You know, I remember meeting Ray Brown, the famous bass player, and speaking with him for 45 minutes. And he said, yeah, you have to go to the States. And blah, 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 blah. So finally, I went there and I, I found, uh, you know, what I wanted there, you know. Basically, all the answers to my question, they were there. What is it? What is it in particular with um, speaking about jazz music? Um, 
that even though it's it's a world phenomenon now, you know, like it's all mm-hmm. over the world. What is the what is, what did you find is the importance of going to the roots or going to actually like I mean you had to physically mobilize you had to go into the you know you had to probably get a visa and all the process and all the dynamics um, it's as I it's it's work you had to go through this so was it worth it and then what is there you know what is it in going physically there and maybe you know in your university experience and also getting to play with other musicians but also getting to probably interview people interview people from the old school era that can what 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 memories do you have and i guess this is the question what memories do you have of the time in the u.s that you that you still carry with you that are are quite are quite vivid in your head because of probably the lasting effect you know uh for me listen i went to the states i didn't want to come back to france <laughs> wow and that says that's huge that's a humongous thing yeah if i was not a bass player i would never come back to france yeah yeah if yeah, yeah if, uh, if you were uh, only if bass then, yeah. if if mu- if bass was only your life and there weren't all these other elements that compose society yeah then... but no but the bass is is a nightmare to carry around <laughs> if I was a sax player, you know, like, I would have moved to New York. I would carry my sax or my trumpet or my trombone or whatever. But a bass back then, you need to buy a car, and everybody was breaking into your car like late oh, 80s, uh, early 90s in New York. New York was yeah. not a you know a tourist place, so it was like really New York City. I remember once, like I, did, uh, I was in New York, I didn't understand that uh, this was a express train. So instead of going out on a uh, fifth, uh, no, like 42nd Street, or something like this, uh, I don't remember the station, but we end up like uh, on 120th Street, like in the Puerto Rican neighborhood or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. It was not really friendly, you know. <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> you're okay. Suspicious man. Yeah, but me, I could go through a little bit, but my uh, blondie friends uh, look like James Dean and <laughs> the other one like look like a soft guy. This didn't go. <laughs> Not ideal for them. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, that was the experience back then. So I, I went there and um, I found everything. I, you know, I, I start to, to listen, you know, and uh, music was not something black and round, you know. Like, I mean, when I black, I, I mean, you know, like the, the vinyl, the physical, like, the vinyl yeah. I, I, for me, for many years, jazz music was this. I, yeah. I could see like once in a while a musician in, in Bordeaux coming to play, but it was like twice per year. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so suddenly I see, okay, this is not how it sounds. This is not how it is made. This is not reality. This is virtual. And this is just a picture taken one day for six hours in a studio, record, a recording yeah. studio. Yeah. This is, this is not the whole life of the musician. So suddenly I get in contact with people, young musicians that have the same love of the music like I do, that they, they feel and they hear the music the same way I, I'm hearing the music. Also, when you're in the stage, you have so many musicians. That suddenly if I say, okay, I want to do that type of music, bingo, I find musicians that like the same <laughs> yeah, type so of music. There's a huge like vast In France, options. I was like, oh, okay, I have to find one guy. Oh, but he doesn't like exactly, but he's close enough to what kind I to settle. like. Yeah, yeah. So even if he has like a Stratocaster guitar, and uh, okay, maybe he's going to play <laughs> like West Montgomery. At the end. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So all of this made that suddenly I was, and then I, I was in contact with uh, American society. You know, I understand many things back then. And uh, I understand also, you know, about how the society is functioning. So the good aspect of the society and the bad aspect. So Yeah. And this, and was, still, this was around what time you say? 86, 89. Mid 80s to the late. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and I'm still, you know, like I'm, I'm still uh, in between. I'm in France without being in France, and uh, I'm not in the States, and I would like sometimes to be in the States, you know. Like, um, do you recall, do you recall, and I, and I know I, I asked this, but do you recall a, a very a very cathartic moment of maybe a, a performance or maybe uh, a particular artist that you saw play um, that, 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 
that did it for you in terms of realizing, ha, huh, this is the record, but this record is only an emblem and it, it can only carry so much of what I am experiencing right now in a nightclub and a, in a, in a, in a, in a gig, whatever. Do you recall any, and I know I'm trying to make you some, you know, with a vast amount of years yeah. there, mm -hmm. but, but do you recall maybe a, a particular artist or, or someone that, that really struck a chord for you mm. in terms of, of, wow, this definitely cannot be emulated in a record or, or maybe it could have been kind of captured, but to, 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 to live it. Or, you know, an artist, a performance, a venue that you went to, or something that to you, that you might remember that captured some in, magic. You no, know, in the state, what I remember then, we were like a uh, lot of young musicians and we we're doing session all, all night long, you know. I remember this, like really growing up together and with that huge energy, like we are going to do something, we are to create something, we are going to create something and we are like moving forward and we are going to... Bring, it was a time that Winton Marsalis was big, and we have to bring back uh, uh, Afro-American uh, music, you know, even if I'm French, you know, but we have to bring it back in the front. It's, it's, yeah. And uh, and uh, this, I remember, and we were a lot, or like, 20, I remember 20 musicians that we were hanging, and many more, you know. I, I'm still in contact with most of the people from back then. This is and and they're main, mainly all from the U.S. or yeah, yeah, yeah. mostly from the U.S. and Japan, U.S. and the and Japan. Wow. Yeah, basically, my my friend from back then, they are like U.S. and Japan. I'm less in contact with Japanese people because they are like far away and uh, like and they don't tour in Europe, but with American musicians. And Do then you... after I met other guys, but I don't have like. Like uh, in the States, it was like, oh, wow, you are like suddenly, ah, finally I'm there where I, I should have been before. You know what I'm saying? The the feeling like when I went to Greece, I said, oh, this is where I belong. The, it was a little bit, the musically, it was like, oh, this is where I belong when I went yeah. to the States. You know? So it was not one guy specifically or one concert or one venue. It's a whole broad. It's a, exactly. It's suddenly going to a concert, a scene. speaking, responding to what the soloist is doing, you know, like, oh, People are going, uh, shouting and things like this. Really understanding the music. I was really like, oh, wow, there. It's coming from there. And it makes sense when you are there too. You know, so. Did you have, you know, as a, as a, as a, as a I, I, I'll take the liberty to say this and you can correct me. Um, like a st student of life, as a student of life, as a person who, who, who I, I acknowledge or I, I see, uh, qualitative references that you are a student of life that there is a constant willingness to evolve um in that time where you were in the u.s what what were some of the lessons if you can maybe list a few that you learned of of playing i don't know did you play mainly with black people was was, was yeah, it mostly, mainly with mostly. what what did you what what did you learn that maybe you were looking to learn or things that you that definitely caught you by surprise? And, and I want to, I want to specify this question in terms of black America of black United States of America. What lessons did you learn in that, in that music scene in that time from black U S Americans that you shared with that you could possibly, that you couldn't have possibly learned staying back in, in France. I remember uh, I was I had a friend. He was a bass player, and uh, he was not really. Good. I was not exceptional, but he was even worse than me. And I remember he's taking my bass, and uh, and uh, he sound, he was sounding authentic, you know, authentic. And I say, come on, he doesn't know harmony like I do. He doesn't have technique as I do. He doesn't have like sound like I do, but he's doing something that. Now it sounds really authentic, you know, like it, it sounds like that's how it has to be played. And, and another time I remember uh, we were playing and they say, OK, just drums and saxophone, which was very in uh, fashion back then. Just drums and saxophone, play duets for a while. And then I remember I, I, I come in, they say they make me sign to come back in the music. And then I didn't bring nothing. I was like... Uh, 
it was almost like, why did I get back into the music? Because I, if I play or I don't play, it doesn't make no difference. Yeah. And this is what I learned from that side. I say, okay, when you play something, you have to be able to try to sound yourself and also authentic. And at the same time, when you play, you have to bring something to the music. This is what they are, how the Afro-American music is working. You bring something. You don't copy somebody else or whatever. No, you have to bring something and be a strong voice inside, you know. So that was like really changing. And the, the way they, they think always, not everybody, but most of them in, uh, in relation with the church where they grew up. And mm -hmm. it's always staying there. It's always staying there. And uh, this took me a while to understand. But uh, this is where I realized it. Like uh, I remember I, I was seeing this uh, gospel singer and she was always coming out of the dorms with a pink pyjama to go to the practice room. You know, in Berkeley, the elevator was going straight down mm -hmm. from the dorms to the lobby, open the, the elevator is opening, and then you go straight to the front desk, take your practicing room, and then go to practice. So yeah. she was coming out with a pink pyjama, PJ, you know, uh -huh. and with like a Mickey Mouse uh, flip-flops, yeah. you know, and like with, uh, how you call the stuff you put, uh, girls they put in the hair, you know, like... Uh, Braids or... No, the, the the rolls, you know, like when you do your hair, like you want to have curls, you know. Oh, the rollers, these rollers, these. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know. So she, oh, so yeah, yeah. So the, yeah, the, uh, had, uh, uh, the, the on her the, head. You, with the stuff on it. Yeah. The P PJ, pink PJ, and she was yeah. going and say, "This is a clown. Come on, like, you cannot go out uh, in front of everybody, you know, in the lobby. Like this. Or, yeah, like this. Come on, you know." Like, and then one day I go to see the gospel choir, you know. Uh, of Berkeley Gospel Choir, and I go, and she's coming out in front in the stage, very well dressed, of course. Then, yeah, yeah. And, and then I was like, "Are you the clown?" That uh, I thought you were a clown, and now you, 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 you give me chills. You know, like, uh, you know, like my skin is going. I mean, my uh, hair going up and everything. You give me chills. I say, "Okay, there is, you know, something else is going on there." You know, it's just, it's just because in Europe or some places we are just like, okay. You have to look nice to to play good, you know. You don't, you cannot, or you have to always be like present. Okay, I have to present. You cannot. You know. So that that basically was a bit of a slap in the face to you. Ah, yeah, totally. Yeah, like you know, like suddenly you say, okay. You have to understand that uh, music is down deep inside, and it's not like uh, something that is superficial, and you just like uh, play as a musician. This is why, yeah. what I didn't like when I came back after in, in France. Is uh, in the middle nineties, like suddenly, like the French musician, they were playing like just like if they were just musician in the fifties, like you know, playing like super cool and uh, dressing Very, up, like a lot, of, a lot of aesthetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like smoking and being like uh, playing like uh, relax. Yeah, like, like a scene from 50s. a movie. Yeah, exactly. And this, I say, no, no, no. This is not what we were doing back in the eighties. You know, in the eighties, we were trying to create. We are not like acting like. I mean, uh, in the movie, you know, so. and and I and I think that might that might come out as a as as a, as a desper as a desperation to 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 find one's own uh, you know one's own sound one's own image and then sometimes we go and look in the past which I think it, it is a good healthy exercise no, this to is go good, and look in the past not to, not but to, to, to say yeah. but but to to to, to 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 use the past as a kind of a copy paste, exactly. I think that's to miss the point. Uh, unless you're doing a very specific tribute, and that's part of the act. But but to find to look at the past and then to allow the past to take you to the future, to take you to the present, exactly. yeah, yeah. and then and then and then kind of like work on that kind of like visualizing like a stew, and you know ma make all that you know organically come together. You know, you also mentioned that you have. Uh, you know, a deep interest in 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 matters of you know historic, mm -hmm. his, the historic narratives and the historic constructions and okay. and what that what that means. You know, t tell us to kind of like give us a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of an intro as to you know what might have sparked that interest uh, or or how did you maybe realize that you had that interest and i say that i say that because sometimes we kind of like we, we 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 find things and then other times kind of like things find us i know it's semantics but but what what do you recall might be 
a place, a time, a smell, or something that you remember that kind of started sparking up this perhaps interest to to maybe de deconstruct some of some you know historic discourses. You know, tell us a little bit about that. How did you arrive to this? Is something I'm yeah because it's not in. yeah okay. Let's go back with the 50th anniversary of the end of the First World War. Vale. Then you go there, and I say, okay, this is like. He, he haunts me like for years, you know, because I couldn't understand how, okay, how you can convince like uh, 8 million of Frenchmen to go and fight for four years. Like what? And then I stay, I, I always like, you cannot, you cannot, you can, you can be patriotic, but to live, you know, outside for four years, like in the trench with the rats, with everything, you know, like uh, dogs coming to eat you at night, you know, like, but your friend is uh, is dying in, in between the line, and you you know how you can, and then you could go back, and of course most of them they were like uh, disturbed. You go back to normal life, and how you can explain this to people, and then 20 years later do it the same again, like fight against uh, Germany again, which was a evil you can uh, you know like evil uh, Nazi government, but still you know you have to go back and everything, and then I say something is wrong you know like why why you can have all these people going for and uh, also being uh, half italian half french you know like seeing how the french thinks about the italian how, you know like always i start to to say it was difficult for me to and and i always i was always uh, interesting and i start to read about books then i go to greece and when i speak about uh, history they say yeah but you cannot understand because you are french so mm. when you say this to me, this is exactly uh, the trigger that, okay, I want to know your story and I want to learn it and you're going to explain to me and everything and I want to, you know. So, and meeting different people, you know. So slowly and slowly I start to see uh, more like a mythology in, inside the narrative of uh, each country, more yeah. than the reality. Like yeah. I'm, I'm uh, from uh, Southeast of France. I see a lot of people from Southeast of France like spitting on Paris, but then, oh, I'm French. I say, you cannot be most of the year, all the time, spitting on Paris and how Paris is bad, and now we are great in South of France. And then you say we are the same country and everything. It's the same. When you go to play a football game, you go to, you do 40 miles away, you go to a village and they hate you. Yeah, but just because to be, of the... yeah, yeah, because you're going to play a football game and uh, you're going to in, they're going to insult you. They are all almost ready to to take the gun out if you know, like yeah, we're in the same about... country, guys. You know, we're in the same country. So there is this attitude of like still tribal. You know, like each part of France. France is very uh, strange country because is is made of different people that have nothing in common. You know. Southeast of France should be with uh, one part should be with Italy, the other part with Spain. Southwest of France should be with Spain. You know, if you can see like this, like the Britain, Britain, should yeah. be with, you know, like and the northeast should be with German, you know, and the north should be with more like. Uh, so anyway, it makes like a culture that look at each other like uh, sometimes they are superior, sometimes they are like, you know, it's always like uh, and then Suddenly, we go to fight and we go to, ah, oh, France is this, France is that, the French culture is this, and at the end of, and now in 2020, uh, come on, what is a French uh, identity? I don't know. You have African people who came, like, uh, you have, like, uh, people that were enslaved and go to Caribbean, and then they are coming back to live in, I mean, they're coming to live in France. Yeah. You have uh, people from North Africa that are here, like, now for 50, 60 years. They are like a third generation. You know, what is the French identity? Like, what is the French culture? You can have like, and then people are putting like some specific, you know, uh, writers or historical events that I don't relate to, you know. I don't relate to that event as personally, even if my French history is going way down to the nights and to even longer than that. But, you know, so I start to, to think about like what I read when you go deeper in the history, I mean, deeper knowing about the past and yeah. what the officially they tell you is it's not the same it doesn't fit there is uh, problems you know i saw i grew up also and i saw the war in yugoslavia where people that speak the same language grew up together just they have a different region and most of them they were communist so they didn't have no region at all 
suddenly one is served, one is crossed, and I'm going to kill you. And even I hate you now. To, yeah, I hate you now. And we went together. And I saw, I did, I didn't see it, but I have friends who told me like stories like that you can't believe. It's people that grew up. You went to school. You play all your life with. You are like best friend. You went to the wedding of the other, and then and now you have a discourse. Yeah, he's coming and he's coming and he's taking your house. He's taking everything in your house, and you cannot say nothing because he's going to kill you. Jesus. So the, I, all of this start to, I say, come on, guys, you have more in common. That's, you have uh, the difference that uh, is going to separate you. Yeah. You know, their, their grandparents, they were buried in the same cemetery next to each other, and then suddenly they kill each other. So all of this slowly make me slowly and slowly, uh, I start to, to realize. And mm -hmm. playing with musicians from all over the planet, I start to say. As well. What, what we have in common and uh, what is separating us. And what separates us most, most of the time, I don't believe is religion. I think it, it's more politics, you know, like uh, like trying to control power and everything. Yeah, like, ideological. Oh, okay. Exactly. We're going to control these people doing this and stuff like this. And then I did my DNA. I mean, in Shekinah, we say, okay, uh, this is your birthday present, uh, my DNA. And suddenly yeah. I get like, my DNA, Another. like, oh, uh, yeah, it, it suddenly open like, because no, and France is kind of forbidden, so I don't want to go too deep how, how I did everything. But then I went to to do my well, DNA. Why? Why is it because of a a, a puristic? Per, per because uh, no, in France is forbidden because you they don't want you to separate people. They don't want you to what? Sorry. To separate, we are wow. one. You understand? Of if course, you do it, because DNA, that's a construction that's made, yeah, and therefore yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Wow, this is how they how they all see. And I realized that a lot of countries that are not pushing much DNA, uh, because suddenly you realize you're not really belonging to where you were belong, you thought you were belonging. For example, the very interesting things, my mother has like, she grew up totally in the Republican, French Republican, I mean, French Republic, sorry, French Republic mythology. She's French, she's like, and you have to go to work out and you have to go to Paris to succeed and blah, 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 blah. And yeah. France is great and France is great. And uh, if we colonize the world, uh, no, it's, it was still a little bit good for the countries we went. You know, she... she An exceptional say, view. Yeah, exactly. And because we brought their culture, we have them to... Uh, you know, she has that type of point of view, you know. Yeah. Really yeah. old French. She's 83, yeah. So she, she grew up with the French Empire and... An idealized so her, version of it. So far to to realize that she was not really French hmm. with her DNA was like it took her like three, four months. Three, four months to to, to say no, it's, she said no, it's not possible. This is not possible. Said, so you share your results with her? No, because yeah, I share mine and I, I did hers. I oh. say, okay, you have to do yours. And she said, No, me, I'm French, I won't have no surprise. And finally, because she do she did a genealogical, uh, you know, like a tree and everything. Mm? She, she, it was some spot that she never thought they were like, suspect and everything. And suddenly with the DNA, she realized, oh, finally my great grandfather, I mean, my grandfather and my great great grandfather is not coming from where I thought. He's, he's really coming from uh, Hungary and, uh, and different place. And then when we did the deep DNA, she realized she is coming from uh, not France at all. She's coming from uh, another part of the world. And for her, it was like totally, it cannot be. Wow. And uh, learning that her mother, her mother was uh, Spanish too. Suddenly, like, uh, she was like, I mean, Spanish. She was coming from the Iberic, uh, you know, peninsula. Because what, what, do you, what do you think that did for her? I mean, like, in, in terms of... I, you know, I, I, you know, this is, I don't know, I'm assuming this is quite recently in terms of, yeah, uh, yeah. so she's of age. So what, what do you think it did for her? Like, um, I put, he, 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 he totally shake, like for three weeks, she, she, I was going to speak with her and then she was okay. And then for, then she totally freaked out. She totally, she said, okay, I don't want to hear any more about that. She totally freaked out because suddenly everything, all the construction she had. How's the like, car received, just falling down? Fall down because she <clears throat> she realized she's Italian, she's a uh, Roman, she's uh, from uh, Dalmatia, like a Croatian coast. She's from uh, Hungary and Croatian uh, and Pannonia, and yeah. she's also from Spain. 
when I tell her she has like ancestry in uh, Cordoba, Granada, and uh, in uh, Al Andalus, no, I cannot come from this. You know. Because of all the constructions there are. Yeah, exactly. And then suddenly she realized that she she's yeah she's because when she dig into a family tree, she confirmed say, it. Yeah, she found out that yes, this mob and the and the DNA told her like okay, this guy was coming from that place, and your grandfather was coming from. Uh, his great grandparents. I mean, his grandparents were were coming from that place too, and uh, and your and my, your grand your father was also this and this and this and very little with uh, to see with the French people, you know. Do you think she made peace with that? I think so. Now she's starting to understand. You know, she's starting to understand that. Oh wow, that's we we always see the history like the past five hundred years, let's say the past thousand years. Yeah, one thousand years, but we never we 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 stop and we forget. The Christian they go, oh, he was Jesus Christ, and then there is a big mess in the middle, yeah. and then yeah. we go back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we forget that nothing stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and there's, then suddenly no she realized she re, we're doing a deep dive of her ancestry. She realized, wow, three uh, four 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 thousand years ago she was belonging to that tribe. That we are living in, uh, in uh, the west east part of Croatia, west part of Serbia. Wow! And then she say she's coming from there. So then she realized, oh, this is where my ancestor they spread in Europe. And w- us, all of us, we forget. All of us, we forget where we're coming from. We just take uh, the narrative of, uh, okay, I'm French, so French Republic, and my ancestor they were the, this guy, and this guy they came, and uh, then uh, they mix with this stuff, and we think that's it. And uh, Spanish, they are all the, you know, like, uh, finally, my DNA is closer to Portuguese people, to Sp- uh, Spanish, you know, like Galicia, than uh, to anything else. And you, Italian, of course. Do you, do you think that, you know, having, you know, because knowing you, you know, and, and this, was a, this was, you know, this was a gift that Shikina gave you, but I'm sure it probably was an interesting process. But what, 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 what did it do for you other than I'm sure you 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 had a, a hunch of of course you know there's there's got to be there's a a, co- a a cocktail of mixology going on here of course like w- with all of us um, but to see it what 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 does it what is what is the experience that you can share to see it to see it documented uh, you know what did that do to you and you know and what did it maybe spark for you did you kind of continue that search or but what do you think it kind of like, like, it's kind of like, imagine uh, a dam opening and water's flowing out. What, what did that, how, how did that yeah, dam break for uh, yeah, you yeah. and what did it do for you, perhaps? That's even if you, I was reading his story for more than 45 years, I didn't know nothing. I know the story that they tell me. This is the battle. This guy is fighting at this. The, the, the France wants to take power. United States coming. Uh, you know, English, British. Uh, Great Britain is taking this. German are doing this. Russian are doing this. This we know. This yeah. is like what they tell us. That's what they tell us. Suddenly, but when I say, okay, who were the the Illyrians or who were like the Thracians or who were these people? And what was happen, happening in the Iron Age in Europe, or what was happening in, uh, you know, like a Neolithic period of the history, you know, I don't know nothing. I went to my mother, that's school teacher. She used to read also, you know, like she teach Italian, she teach French, and she, she became a librarian in the, at the end of her career. So she has a huge culture and everything. And I go to her, you know about that? She doesn't know. Hmm. We, all of us, and I can, if you don't go to Wikipedia really quick, I can catch most of the, I can catch most of the planet, people, you know, like, even if you have a PhD in history, you won't know. Because uh, there is some parts of the story that you, you suddenly you realize is totally blank. Like, I went to see for my family. I, was, I wanted to search from where I was, uh, Span, uh, you know, Iberic. Mm-hmm. So I say maybe my father was dark feature. I mean, darker feature than the rest of the people in North of Italy. Really, like he could be Puerto Rican, he could be you know South uh, North African or whatever. And I, I thought that he was like uh, different. Uh, so I start to search and 
And I realized, for example, the, uh, the historical document of the 16th century in Italy, there is a blank. There are not so many literature about that one because it was Spanish invading. So yeah. finally, they, they don't, they, a French also were coming and we don't have that much information, documentation. That, documentation on that period of history. And there is plenty of other. There is like, a, for example, the Illyrians, I'm coming from Illyrians, they disappear for 400 years. We don't know what happened to them. They were there for thousands of years, and suddenly they disappear. And uh, I have a, I have a t theory about this because it was Italian living there, and suddenly these Italian are like. It's a, I, I, it's a long story, but uh, it, Italian from the Dalmatian coast and from Yugoslavia, they get kicked out by um, Tito government at the end of the Second World War. Yeah. For many reasons, because uh, of irredentism and stuff, like that. so they get they they throw them out. But these people, they were there for thousand years, and I'm sure if you do their DNA, it will show that they were there before the Slav people. So these these people, they were kicked out from a place where they belonged, maybe for two thousand years, three thousand years. But this, nobody wants to do the DNA because nobody wants to speak about this. Yeah, it's so a heavy this, thing to the construct. Exactly. So the Italian, they would go and say, oh, okay, we have to go back to this country because where there be, you know, because you see that what is happening on the other part of the planet, a little bit eastern in Mediterranean, where people are coming and say, we were there 3,000 years ago and uh, this is our country. So you can be living there for 2,000 years, we're going to put you off. So all of this is suddenly you realize that. If you know really who you are, or if you start to really go and dig in the history, it's like uh, you see, like okay, the France was a gallows, you know, like Gaulois, and then they get uh, the mm -hmm. French. They arrive, the German tribe Franks. They arrive, and then they give the name to France uh, to their kingdom, like Franks. Uh, you know, France is the kingdom of the Franks, mm -hmm. and then it's like a, a little bit of other and. And let's not go really deep inside what was. And yeah, then, and then magic. It's, know, all, it's all. It's all. Yeah, and, yeah. and the Roman, they get kicked out by the barbarians, yeah. and way visigoths they came and they take the place of the Romans, and the Romans they disappear. No, the Romans. I'm a Roman. You are probably you are probably like Shikina. She has a big part of Roman ancestry. Mm -hmm. You know, from Italy, I'm Latin. Uh, you know, from um, I'm Etruscan. You know, like suddenly you discover that. All these people that disappear, we don't know. They, they still they live through us, but let's not pull it out, pull it out too much, or let not people know about this story when they, they were together or not together, or why they fight and everything. So we can separate them. You know, the more you know. You know, you know as so, as as we as we um, I, I want to get also your perspective as to kind of like looking into the future as we start landing uh, this uh, this in the last. 10 minutes around of this talk you know looking at your at your at your family you know looking at your kids you know you have three kids yeah um you know going from you know very early age now a kid that is uh, uh past his toddler age and he's uh soon enough he'll be a teenager and then you have a, a, teenager, a teenager i believe yeah, yeah. so almost yeah what, what is what what is your you know, in in the society that we live in, and 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 seeing how, um, well, looking at globalization, that 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 is a clear phenomena. Of I mean, you can take two kids from different parts of the world, more or less, and they'll have very similar <laughs> things they like, um, movies, music, whatever. Yeah, yeah, of course. But look, looking at also how much uh, edu the education. The education systems i'll make it in plural have failed us in their perhaps unwillingness to to touch certain things to open a can of worms because they have worms and we don't want to see the worms there really are no can of worms it's it's just things that we have made us uh, the, the, the the taboos that we don't want to talk about how do you what do you do in terms of communicating educating as as a parent your children also you know ed educating educating them um responsibly you know when i say responsibly is is, is to have this awareness and you don't you don't just want to continue 
mythifying things and at the same time you know they're children how do you pass down this this knowledge and also um they live in this world so they are going to experience Myth building. I mean, we're we're surrounded by myth building. The, the myth building isn't the problem. The problem is what we myth build about. Exactly. What are we myth building about, and how does that change us? So, how do you you know how do ex, how do you express and explain the educational process um, between you and your and your kids, whether it be in the soccer field, whether it be at school, whether it be through music? How would you how would you characterize that? pedagogical process you know within the family I think, uh, yeah 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 no i understand i think that one of the main main confusion we have is like we think because you educate somebody you give him a diploma which is like a proof that he did a good job in in, uh, in his year of studying he's going to be super smart or he's going to succeed in the society and we forget that the most important is like okay this is important but the most important, if you don't have that element, is going to everything else is nonsense. Is the common sense. Most of the people don't understand that what is the most important is common sense. This is what I say to my kid. You because I grew up with a father who was a super bright guy, like uh, very smart, very bright, and everything. And but sometimes I was he was making like he was totally losing common sense because you. From his uh, childhood, he had to be. Sometimes he was like uh, going to, to contradict everything you were going to say, uh, even yeah. if it doesn't correspond to what he's thinking. He was going to contradict, like a pre-scripted idea already. Uh, exactly, ready to... and he was always he, even. You say, but come on, Dad, this is not what you think. You told yeah. me the opposite last week, but because he was in that state of mind at, at that moment, and he was super bright. He has a yeah. PhD. He, he went out of the engineer school. He was officer in the French army, although he was an Italian immigrant. <coughs> so he was all this bright guy. He was decorated in the army. You know, he was like uh, he was like creating nonstop. He was doing research. He was doing research on thermodynamic. Then he went to do research on research on uh, electrostatic. <coughs> so you have this super bright brain, and suddenly he's losing totally common sense. Yeah, and it sounds ridiculous to say, "Come on." Man. And he was doing this sometimes with other people too. And I said, Dad, stop. Suddenly you disappear. I understand after for the reason. And this is what I want to, to teach my kids. Okay, you can study as much as you want, but always keep your feet on the ground. Remember where you're coming from. Remember uh, your ancestor. You remember this, remember this. You know, it's like I had one great grandfather. He went to the state. He stayed there three years, early in, uh, night. Uh, 20th, 20th century, I think it was there, uh, 1903 or something like this, and then 1906. And but they were there. They come back. They they fight for their life. They, they were trying to find a good life for their uh, kids and everything. And they were not educated, but they were always grounded on the you know like their feet on the ground and yeah. always like thinking like okay like it's, it's nice. And they were also philosoph, you know, they could be have philosophical ideas and everything. They were like, when you were listening to them, my other grandfather, he was like, you listen to him, he was like, he enjoyed life, he was everything. And he went to through to World War, you know, he wow. went to all the disease. He went to, uh, he has like, uh, he had like appendicitis. How you say in English appendicitis? Um, the appendix. You know, like the, yeah, yeah, the appendix. appendix. Yeah, and then when yeah, he yeah. went very bad that he became peritonite, you know, so and back in 20, 1920, he was no antibiotic or whatever. So they are like to, you know, like that. then he had typhus, then he had like this. And this. and this guy went through everything and he was like, I remember he was enjoying his life. He has his bottle of wine when he was older, you know, he was going to the village to buy his meat for the lunch. He was like buying his baguette, you know, and. You know, and these people, and he was doing his garden, growing up his own veget vegetables and everything. So these people, and this is what I'm trying to teach. And also that we are all brothers and sisters. I know everybody says, oh, yeah, brother and sister is like. Yeah. But I, yeah. Really, I really believe, you know, like we, what separates us is, is very little. What we have in common is very big. Yeah. And when we want to build a, a French nation, like people, they say, oh, if I say I'm French, oh, you are French. So you think like that. 
Yeah, there's a because, preconceived because notion. I have a, I, because I have a, a small book that say I'm French, but I'm, <laughs> I am French, really. You know, like if you see my DNA now, and if you see my uh, family yeah. story, I, I, you know, when when it was a confinement, I was so so upset about the french people how, how stupid they were like fighting for everything no you don't put a mask because uh, this is a uh, you don't have li- uh, freedom if you put a mask you know all this stuff i say okay let me check out how i can get the uh, italian passport like this i'm not going to live in italy but uh, like this i'm not going to live with italian but at least i'm going to be italian and not having to deal with these french people you know so i was like and when i say other procedure i say forget it I have to go back to Italy to find my great grandparents, you know, and my grandparents' uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. birth certificate. I say, okay, no, forget yeah. it. But because you had a sense are, of curiosity that. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. I say, okay, no, I'm, I'm fed up with like a society where you, like this, I can say, oh, no, I have French passport, but I have also Italian passport. And if I can have a third one, it could be Puerto Rican and then uh, maybe Greek and maybe American because this is a country I like. You know? Yes. And it'll be, it'll be such because a Because I statement. feel, yeah, no. Yeah, exactly. But people, they, they, they put you in, immediately without little, knowing. They say, boxes. okay, and, in boxes and like, this. oh, you're French, so you think like this. Oh, you're Italian, you think like that. Oh, you're from Southeast of France. Oh, you're like that. Oh, you're yeah. like that. You're, yeah. you're f- from Bordeaux. And then, but we are much more complex than that, you know, like, uh, and this is like, if there is not one type of Puerto Rican, you know, like, yeah, I mean, there is one thing you can characterize as Puerto Rican. Like but 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 the, but the speaking <laughs> but the speaking pluralities is very yeah. meritable because it, because that and to speak in pluralities it shows that you are really trying to have a willingness to have empathy because it is easy to generalize because it makes life easier. It makes life easier to caricaturize the other. Um, yeah. But that that is very unsustainable. That leaves that that actually leaves nothing to be desired, um, because it sabotages relationships. It sabotages the opportunity for you to get to know the other, and to really get to know the other. Not not your preconceptions. And we all have, I see, we all have preconceptions. Of That's course, not we course, can, we cannot course. delete that. Now, what do we do with them? How how open or close are our doors? to allow new information and new data to accompany those preconceptions and to challenge those preconceptions. And when you have culture building in that in that path, oh, that's phenomenal. But that's tragically not what is being fomented or what is being promoted in, in mainstream culture, say in the United States of America, that is not the idea being promoted. The idea promoted is it's still a mythological perspective of the melting pot, which is this deranged idea that, that there's a sense of plurality, but there really isn't because we're all coming in and we're all melting. Um, so then when you come with this notion of, ha, huh, I think that maybe the perception you have of the other isn't quite accurate. That puts people in a shaking, kind of like when you shared about your mom and learning those things she had accepted throughout her life. It's not an easy thing, but then it also shows that it's not an impossible thing. Exactly. To, to, to deal with. Yeah. You and know? we have to think like when I see my kids, you know, like, uh, so I see, if you see uh, the, the two boys, I mean, you saw the pictures. So one is blondie and everything, and oh, he has, he has a little bit of natural curls, and the other one is like, uh, is mini me, you know, it's like, uh, it's like me, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, different, uh, very just different. That, yeah, yeah, exactly, very different. Yeah, same father, same mother, you know, and then when you go down in their DNA, I didn't do their DNA because it's going to be, but more or less, we, we know. So you have some Taino, you have some uh, Western African, like Sierra Leone and in Nigeria, you have some Guanches coming from uh, Shekina, from Puerto Rico, I mean, from Canary Island. Then you have like some, uh, you know, like French, European tribes that were like uh, for thousands of years living in uh, Europe, but suddenly we forgot about them because we have to create uh, nations. Yeah, and, and then, history writes them out. And, and then you see them, you have a blondie one, and you know, it's, it's like I say, how oh, you can be, I, I, sometimes I say to Shekina, how oh, oh, two kids, they can look so much like pink or European, when they are mostly 
South Mediterranean European in their, you know, DNA and yeah. uh, or African or Tainos. This is yeah. like for me. But if you put them in a, in, in, in a classroom with kids, nobody will say, oh, this kid, he has African roots or Taino roots or, you know, no, yeah. you say this is a European French. Oh, this is a typical French phrase and this is typical French phrase, you know. And then we categorize people like this and okay. And uh, this is what I'm always saying to them, like, uh, Emilia realized, oh, he's a little bit Jewish too. Oh, I'm oh, shoot, Ashkenaz, you know, like, so it was for him. How oh, I can be that? Who's that? <laughs> you know? So slowly and slowly you make him understand, they, okay, so, you know, this friend, she's this, or this friend is uh, this, and you're, ah, you know, and, you know, and trying to open, they are mind also that they are not like uh, because when Emilia doesn't say no to nobody he has American passport. Yeah, he has American passport because at school if you are oh, American in France is kind of good but not good you know like uh, you know yeah. sometimes you know you know what I'm saying in Europe sure. you this love hate relationship with the uh, yes United yes. States you know it might be changing so, a little bit with newer generations but yeah but there is still, still yeah it's still it's still it's still you know like especially now oh, we like we like. Uh, Hip hop and this and this, but uh, the culture do, element, yeah, it's yeah, we do German but... hip hop or French hip hop, uh, rap, you know, and that stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. So that's why, and I, I, I want to open their eyes and say, okay, so we receive friends from all over the, the place. I want to, uh, we visit countries, you know. I want to we look movies. I want to them to be, you know, we are like a big with my older son. We are like a big uh, Denzel Washington face. You know, yeah. so, so equalizer, fancies, you know, a lot of movies. His filmography, yeah, that's yeah. very broad. So like this, you can see and you can learn also about the American culture. I mean, movies not really learning. But about it's culture, a but representation. Can give, yeah. yeah, it can give some idea of stereotypes that and uh, how the culture. So always trying to be open. And when there is, when somebody say, oh, this, this culture, I say, don't uh, don't go down don't look at this culture down or yeah. you are you're not up you 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 know so he's learning uh, the older one is learning about uh, puerto rican culture you know he, uh, he has his uh, puerto rican grandparents they came to last year so he could, he could, he could spend time you know? that's cool and one day the three kids they could they can come to the states also you know to to enjoy like the american way of life you know like American way of life to to try to to see the, uh, because of course kids they will love fast food they will love like you know like uh, <laughs> Disney and all the yeah yeah, yeah, yeah I, yeah, I don't course. know about Disney but all the practical because the practical oh. uh, side of the American society you know yeah. like in France yeah. when it's closed it's closed you know you don't find a twenty four hour store or twenty yeah days, yeah or, you know like that yeah. yeah, and there and there's no, there's some pragmatic I mean there's there's some pragmatic. Of when, course. When you are young, you when you are young, contributions. It's very yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's very, it's not you denying. want to go. You want to go straight to the point and uh, bingo. You are There's the no country. denying yeah. that you know the American some, some elements of American culture have been to been just groundbreaking in terms of you know it's just how do you take those four steps and and pick point you know what 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 that what that has led to and that's with I mean, with any culture. And um, just to to finish, uh, on, that's the funny part. Like you know, I'm a French Italian. You know, and when I see American Italian, it's totally two different cultures. Yeah, <laughs> I imagine. Like, you know, I mean, yeah, this oh, us, we like totally into fu uh, football, soccer. You know, soccer, and then they are into baseball. Yeah, <laughs> unknown, uncharted territory. We eat spaghetti with meatballs. We eat polenta <laughs> yes. or whatever. You know, like so. There's a lot of videos on YouTube commenting on Italians experiencing Italian cuisine in the U.S. and it's it exactly, is yeah. it is hilarious. You know, I, I like to close off with this one one question, and then you can mm -hmm. briefly answer. You know, and it's in the line of you know Eduardo Galeano's uh, sharing of utopias and utopias. You know, what is the purpose of the utopia? You know, you take five steps, the utopia takes five more steps, and you keep on moving forward, and it just becomes this unattainable reference. So then what is the purpose of it, you know, to, to, to keep on moving forward, to keep on striving forward? Mm -hmm. So what are, what are, you know, as a last question to give you a last word, what are those utopias for you, especially in times like now, that allow you to keep yourself pressing forward? Mm, I think for me, the utopia is to think that we can... Uh, continue with this world 
without having programs you know like i think that's a big utopia like to think that war resolving are resolving things are a big for me this is the biggest utopia that okay we're going to kill these people and they are going to be so happy that we are going to resolve the problems you know so i i think for me like to think that we should live in peace we should have like a ecological uh thinking a little bit to to save the planet we should like you know think a little bit better about how we consume what we eat yeah. what kind of food we put this this i don't think is a utopia this i think is reality yeah i think everything opposite like for me what is so abstract is like you still have to explain that uh donald trump is a ridiculous president like to some for people to, yeah to, to to that you have still to say that you have to explain why to vote for biden and kamala i think uh, uh what's uh, kamala is uh, well since you have to all to argue even to argue on that is it tells you like uh some people are living in reality and some people are living in utopia utopia is like uh, trump is uh, i mean is one of the worst joke of the history of the planet you know he's not that dangerous but he kill soon he will have killed more american people than the yeah. second world war you know yeah. yeah so if you don't realize that that means you have a problem you know in six months he did more than in uh, three four years of war of american army so you know and i think for me is to still when i'm uh, today i was like this morning i was at 8 a.m on the football club because i'm uh, doing a, a workshop all day long and i finish at 6 p.m you know wow. with the kids so wow. i was like and tomorrow morning i do the same and um, before that i have to bring my my son to university but what i want to say is like i'm trying to them you know when they they, they make fun because of this guy because he's like darker i stop them immediately when uh, when i uh, they say oh this guy is bad is he does is not a gift for football i say stop it you you know you maybe one day is a guy who's going to give you the ball and you're going to win thanks to this guy because he's going to give you the ball and you're going to put the victory goal you know yeah so, so respect this guy he's learning is a so trying my utopia utopia is to to go down from the basis to go with these kids and try to teach them like what sometimes the school is not giving them but like solidarity we love each other we are in the same country together i don't like the french republic but there is no other choice for now the system everywhere on the planet is to put like uh, nationalistic states yeah. maybe one day is going to change but for now i have to adapt to the system and i think i will die and the system will still go on but and to help them to to help a kid that is coming from outside doesn't speak really good language help him to integrate and uh, you know always try to to be are you coming from north africa are you coming from uh, sub-saharan africa are you coming from uh, spain portugal italy okay let's let's do this are ah, your your ancestor they were here in this place for like 1000 years in bordeaux hey, bye. come on you we welcome everybody and you teach them like to fight together to i mean to fight to help each other on the field struggle you know together. like to, yeah. to struggle together to to help ah you are down on the floor i i lift you up oh this is today the, the other team I, I don't hate them i don't want to kill them i just want to play a game and i want to be better than them and i respect them and i try you know and if they beat me that means they were better than me you know yeah and, and try to to give all these humanist uh values to the to the kids my kids and to the other kids and uh, just by the example also to to not uh, insult everybody when I'm on the football field, you know, like uh, I see so many trainers try to change, you know, like a little bit around me. And then if everybody is trying to change, like to, to respect everybody, and then I think that we will, uh, we will reach something uh, for this, uh, for the next gener generation and for that century. You know? Yeah, it's something try very to, necessary. Like for me, I, I always ask the same question. To South American, can you explain to me how you created nation in South America? What is the difference between uh, the uh, natives mixed with uh, uh, Spanish uh, colons, you know, like uh, mixed together, and with and uh, then they bring us uh, sometimes you know, like uh, people from Africa, enslaved people from Africa, and what is the difference between uh, uh, Venezuela, Colombia? Paraguay, you know, can you yeah. explain to me? Since since the natives, they didn't have the right to speak for the independence or, or the creation of a nation. So 
what is the difference between a Spanish colon, uh, between uh, the difference between a Spanish colon uh, from uh, Venezuela with a Spanish colon from uh, Colombia? Yeah. Oh, and the most funny is Uruguay and uh, Argentina. All of them are Italian, Spanish, and uh, you know, like, and nobody can explain. Oh, yeah. There is. This is the most abstract, nineteenth yeah, century. Uh, it's the invisibilization of of yeah, of of how 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 once came to power and and dictated. You know what? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Even if you think of Puerto Rico. Okay, we're going to do Puerto Rico is independent. But then maybe the north is going to say, yeah, but look, we have a tropical zone and south they are like more like a dry zone. So maybe we could we should cut Puerto Rico in two and make two states. You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah, which this is the thing that it becomes a prag it becomes a pragmatic discourse, but what does Because that... the bomba from Luisa is not the same like the bomba from Ponce. Exacto. <laughs> We had you, a good find, you, I, can, I had a, you can always find a difference to separate people, you know. And entirely. And I, and I think it's good to have the differences, but sometimes we do it with not not to enrich the world exactly, in differences. Exactly. Yeah, but yeah, to we use it to separate. Separate. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's the point. Olivier, gracias, man. Um, Thank you. Gracias por to be here and sharing a little bit about your life and path, I really appreciate it. I really have valued it so much. Everyone who tuned in also thank you. Um, yeah, thank and, you. And, and who will tune in uh, in recorded mode, also thank you. And if I always... You a French guy, at this time awake, I want to say... <laughs> I pay him champagne. <laughs> I know, right? Anyone anyone up from that region, from yeah. the... I give you European champagne tomorrow. Time zone. Yeah. <laughs> it is very you 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 valiantly endured this evening with us. Okay, so so you. so thank you. Um, don't disconnect just yet, Olivier. I yeah. always like to close with the words of Walter Mercado. I don't know if you're familiar with Walter Mercado. Is no, uh, he has a documentary on Netflix called Ask Chiquina. Ask, Ask okay. her who Walter Mercado is. But there's a documentary on Netflix called Mucho Mucho Amor. He was a famous Puerto Rican astrologer. Astrologist, okay. and he used to, used to close his segments by saying, "You know, que tenga mucha paz, pero que tenga mucho mucho amor." So, people, in that note, I'll leave you. See you tomorrow. Much peace. No te desconecte, Oliver. Chao.